Thank you for joining me today on our Side by Side. And today we're going to think about Proverbs 8, which is a chapter that tells us about wisdom as if it were a person calling out, crying out, speaking to us, inviting us, someone who wants us to get into a really good place. Well, let's think about where this wisdom is to be found. Let's read from verse 1. Listen as wisdom calls out. Hear as understanding raises her voice on the hilltop along the road. She takes her stand at the crossroads, by the gates at the entrance of the town. On the road leading in, she cries aloud. I call to you, to all of you. I raise my voice to all people. You simple people use good judgment. You foolish people show some understanding. Listen to me, for I have important things to tell you. So where do we hear this wisdom? Well, according to this passage, wisdom is calling out on all the key places, hilltop, crossroads, city, gates, entrance to the main city, the main road in. All places, there's an accessibility to hearing this wisdom. How does she do it? Well, it says calls aloud. It's not a whisper. It's crying out. It's like trumpeting across the whole of, 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 the, of the scene. And what is she saying? What is the elements or what's the character of this wisdom? Well, it says, everything I say is right. I speak the truth. I detest deception. My advice is wholesome. There is nothing devious. My words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those with knowledge. So, what then? Well, surely this is like an invitation to us, and it does continue with the word choose at the end of that. Choose. This wisdom that we read of in Proverbs 8 is to be seen in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the teachings of Scripture primarily. God's wisdom, his wonderful personal character is to be displayed in the world that he has made. Of course, many people in the world say they're very open-minded, but they may only be open-minded to the things that they want to be. And that sometimes does not include God, especially in our modern world. And so as we come to the Bible, where the wisdom of God is to be found, we remember that the Bible is reading us just as we are reading it. And in order to really hear what God is saying, we need to be humble and open, or we need to hear it in a way that is unbiased, without prejudice. And so when it talks about choosing, choose this, it's saying, come to me and listen to me. Hearing correctly leads to choosing wisely. And if it's as if we are forced now to make a decision, what are we going to seek above all? You see, everybody is seeking something. It could be happiness, success in their particular passion, or just they want to know they're loved and accepted. They want a quiet life. They just want, you know, peace. Is that the word? We can only really know if we get these things as we live throughout life. We may have something and think it's going to bring us happiness, but it's only after you've had it for some time that, the, that you then really know, did it bring me the happiness? Or am I just left as empty as I was beforehand? The truth is that all these are only byproducts of pursuing true wisdom, pursuing Jesus. That's why in Matthew 6, in verse 33, we read that we should seek first the kingdom of God and then all these other things, the things that people think will solve their life's problems, that's the material things of life, essentially, all these things will be added to you as well. How does it work? Well, when we decide this choosing, as we're encouraged to do in verse 10, when we decide to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we discover that he really does deal with all of our heart desires. He promises all the things that we, we were made to enjoy. That's the life in all its fullness that he speaks about recorded in John 10, 10. And that's why God's people can rejoice in some of the strangest of places. That's why they can know simultaneously sorrow and yet be rejoicing, as the Bible speaks of. Take, for example, Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. There they have been in prison, they've been put into prison after having been beaten. And we discover them in the inner part of that prison, 
singing praise to God. That's a remarkable experience. Now, why is it that they're able to do that? Because they have chosen the path of wisdom. And wisdom's path said, there are right things to do, good things to do, better things to do, better responses, better reactions. And they have made those. And in doing and making those, it has led them to this city, Philippi, where they have been able to encourage people to trust the Lord. But as a consequence, many others have been angered. Now, the end of that story is that the earthquake comes. The jailer is also blessed because in wisdom, using the wisdom of the gospel, Paul, rather than see the man who'd been cruel to them punish himself, he says, don't harm yourself. Now, that's not the wisdom of the world, is it? As a consequence, this man comes to faith, he and his whole family. And certainly there were anxious days, dark, deep days of trouble and trial that would have that you would have said to yourself, that's hardly the result. That's not much wisdom there, is it? We studied about two or three weeks ago on a Sunday morning, and if you want, you can go back and re-listen to this on our YouTube channel, Acts 27, on the storm-driven boat in the Mediterranean. With all these people, the rich captain, the rich owner, the powerful, successful centurion of the special forces of the Roman army. And they were all reduced to nothing. And yet Paul, along with his companions, Aristarchus and Luke, could be at rest and have an assurance and be hopeful because they had chosen wisdom. They had chosen Jesus. And he had reassured them. He had reassured them that by following him, everything would be okay. Oh yes, there was a storm and there was the threat to life and limb. But nonetheless, they experienced his peace. And in the end, they were delivered in that moment. But of course, you could look at someone like Stephen. You read about him in the earlier chapters of the Acts of the Apostles and how he is taken out and stoned to death, as many thousands of others have been killed for their faith also. But Stephen chooses the wise path. The path of wisdom leads him to stand up for truth. Yes, that's why he was beaten to death because he told the truth and he lived for the truth. But as he's dying, it says he looks up and he says, I see Jesus standing and the angels in glory. You see, his choice was well worth it. And what if Jesus, who chooses the wisest path of all and his Father's will, has also experienced a life full of many trials, But think of all the good that has come from that. Think of how it has changed your life if you're a believer and my life and your future and my future. Christian friend, if all is hard and full of trouble now, don't be confused as if you had sort of lost everything. But in Christ you are still on the right path, even though at times you look around and say, I don't know, this doesn't seem very good. It seems a hard path. There are times when we're travelling, we think we're on the wrong road, but every now and again we get a little indicator, a little sign that says, yes, you're still in the right path. It may look strange, but you're on the right path. You know, the wisdom of the world is evident daily, and it often leads people into making a mess. It has the, well, it looks on the surface of it to be smart and wise, and yet the wisdom of Christ confounds the world but it brings life and health to any person and people. Learning to love, not hate. Learning to forgive. Learning to bless. Seeking to serve. Seeking to share. These are all the fruit of Christ's wisdom. Not just good humans. They are really Christ's wisdom. And yet it all begins every day by choosing Christ. And you know, even when we've been unwise, there's a wise way to move forward. And that is to turn once again to our Saviour and who will take us and lead us back along that path. So we should begin each day, as it says in verse 34, waiting at wisdom's gate. And that's just seeking his will, humbling our hearts. And let's do that. And let's catch up on Monday 
Have a good weekend and God bless you.